Hello dear students. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Engineer Mehmo Sucha. I am lecturer in the Department of Technology, Sarat University of Science and Information Technology, Peshawar. As I am teaching you the subject is uh, fluid mechanics. Today is your lecture number 6. In lecture number 6, we will study about a buoyancy center of buoyancy, meta center, meta center in height and equilibrium condition of floating bodies. So, coming to the topic, what is buoyancy? The tendency of a fluid to uplift a submerged body because of the upward thrust of the fluid is known as force of buoyancy or simply buoyancy. It is always equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body it will be interesting to know that if the force of buoyancy is greater than the weight of the body, it will be pushed up till the weight of the fluid displaced is equal to the weight of the body and the body will float. But if the force of buoyancy is less than the weight of the body, it will sink down. So what is buoyancy? Buoyancy is basically the tendency of fluid to uplift the submerged body because of the upper thrust of the fluid. It is always equal to the uh, weight of the fluid displayed by the body when the body floats in the uh, liquid. Uh, as the force of buoyancy is greater than the fluid displaced by the body, the body will float on the surface of water but if the force of buoyancy is less than the weight of the body, the body will sink down. Next is the center of buoyancy. The center of buoyancy is the point through which the force of buoyancy is supposed to act. So the point through which the buoyancy force act is known as center of buoyancy. And it is always the center of gravity of the volume of the liquid displaced. In other words, the center of buoyancy is the center of area of the immersed section. So, the when the immersed section, when the surface is immersed in the liquid, then uh, the immersed section area or the center of the area of the immersed section is called the center of buoyancy. Next is Archimedes principle. The Archimedes principle states whenever a body is immersed wholly or partially in a fluid, it is buoyed up, means lifted up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body. So according to Archimedes principle, when we immerse a body in the uh, liquid wholly or partially, the uh, some force is applied on it which lift uh, this uh, body or lifted this body by a force which is equal to the amount of water which is displaced by the body or in other words uh, whenever a body is immersed wholly or partially in a fluid the resultant force acting on it is equal to the difference between the upward pressure of the fluid and its bottom and the downward force due to gravity. So this is the uh, principle of, uh, uh, or this is the Archimedes principle. Uh, next we will solve an example. Uh, a statement of example is a uniform body 3 meter long, 2 meter wide and 1 meter deep floats in water. If the depth of immersion is 0 0.6 meter, what is the uh, weight of the body? The uh, dimension of a, a uniform body is is given which floats in water uh, also the depth of immersion is given which is 0 0.6 meter we have to find the weight of the body so first of all in solution we will write the given data in given data we have length equal to 3 meter width uh, 2 meter depth 1 meter and depth of immersion is equal to 6 meter now we know that volume of uh, water displaced is equal to 3 meter multiplied by 2 meter into 0 0.6 meter equal to 3.6 cubic meter. So this is amount of water will be displaced when the body is immersed in water. Now the weight of the body is equal to weight of water displaced. 
according to Samiti's principle. So the weight of water is equal to unit weight of water multiplied by uh, volume of uh, liquid displaced. So the volume of liquid displaced is equal to 3.6 cubic meter and we have already known that the unit weight of water is 9.81 kN per cubic meter. So we will get the total weight of the body which is that is equal to 35.3 kN and this is the answer of our example 5.1. Now we have example 5.2. The statement of the problem is, or example is, a floating buoy in harbor is to be assisted in floating upright by a submerged weight of concrete attached to the bottom of the buoy. How many cubic meters of concrete weighing 23 kilonewton per cubic meter must be provided to get a net downward pull of 3.25 kilonewton from the weight? Take specific weight of the sea water as 10 kN per cubic meter. So, first of all, we will write the given data. In given data, we have specific weight of concrete which is given 23 kN per cubic meter. Also, the downward pull is given which is 3.25 kN. And specific weight of water is uh, let also given which is 10 kN per cubic meter. Now, we know that weight of 1 cubic meter of concrete in C is equal to 23 minus 10 equal to 30 kN per cubic meter. Uh, also, the weight of concrete required is equal to a downward pull divided by weight of concrete in water. So, that is equal to 3.25 divided by 30 equal to 0 0.25. 25 cubic meter and this is the answer for example 5.2 so this much amount of concrete or volume of concrete should be required to get a net downward pull of 3.25 kilometer now we have example 5.3 a statement is a block of wood 4 meter long, 2 meter wide and 1 meter deep is floating horizontally in water. If the intensity of wood uh, be 6.87 kN per cubic meter, find the volume of water displaced at position of the center of buoyancy. So the dimension of wooden blocks are given which is floating horizontally in water. Also, the density of wood is given, which is 6.87 kN per cubic meter. We have to find the volume of water displaced and also the position of the center of buoyancy. So, first of all, we will write the given data. In given data, we have size of wooden block, which is given equal to 4 meter into 2 meter into 1 meter. Also, the density of wood is given, which is 6.87 kN per cubic meter. Now, the volume of water displaced is equal to, we know that the volume of wooden block is equal to 4 into 2 into 1, which is equal to 8 cubic meter, and its weight is equal to 8 into 6.87, that is equal to 55 kilonewton. Therefore, the volume of water displaced is equal to weight of block divided by density of water. So, weight of block is 55 kilonewton, and density of water is 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter. So we will get the total volume of water displaced which is equal to 5.6 cubic meter. Now we have to find the position of center of buoyancy. We also know that the depth of immersion is equal to volume divided by sectional area. So volume is already find out which is 5.6 and sectional area is equal to 4 into 2. So that is equal to 0 0.7 meter. So the total depth of immersion is come out to be 0 0.7 meter and the center of buoyancy will be equal to 0 0.7 divided by 2 which is equal to 0 0.35 meter from the base. Then this is the answer of our example 5.3. Next we have example 5.4. A wooden block of 4 meter into 1 meter into 0 0.5 meter in size and the and our specific gravity 0.75 is floating in water. Find 
the weight of concrete of specific weight 24 kN per cubic meter that may be placed on the block which will emerge the wooden block completely. So uh, dimension of blocks are given, also the specific gravity uh, is given of the wooden block which is floating in water. We have to find the uh, weight of concrete uh, whose specific gravity is, sorry, whose specific weight is given, uh, which is 24 kN per cubic meter, which may be placed on this block that uh, it will immerse the wooden block completely. First of all, we will write the given uh, data size of wooden block is given, which is 4 meter into 1 meter into 0 0.5 meter. Also, specific gravity of block is given, which is 0 0.7. So specific also and uh, specific weight of concrete is also given as a 24 kilonewton per cubic meter. Let us assume that uh, W is equal to weight of concrete required to be placed on the wooden block. Now we know that the volume of wooden block is equal to 4 meter into uh, 1 meter into 0 0.5 meter that is equal to 2 cubic meter. And uh, the weight of wooden block uh, is equal to 9.81 the specific uh, weight of water multiplied by uh, specific uh, gravity of uh, wooden block and multiply by volume will give you the total uh, weight of the wooden block which is 14.7 kN. Also the total weight of the block is equal to 14.72 uh, plus total weight of concrete required to be placed on this wooden block. Now we know that the when the block is completely immersed in water, volume of water displaced is equal to 2 cubic meter as the volume of wooden block is 2 cubic meter. So when this wooden block is completely immersed, the volume of water displaced will be equal to 2 cubic meter. Now therefore the upward thrust as the block is completely immersed in water is equal to 9.81 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 19.62 kN. As we have already studied that whenever a body is uh, immersed in liquid, it displaces water and the quantity of uh, displaced water or the weight of displaced water is equal to the amount of the uh, upward thrust of the liquid on that uh, block or surface. Now equating the total weight of the block and concrete uh, with the upward thrust. So total weight of uh, the block and concrete uh, is equal to the upward thrust of the block. So total weight of concrete and block is equal to 14.72 plus W and that is equal to the upward thrust which is 19.62. Take 14.72 on the other side we will get the total weight of the concrete required to be placed on the wooden block that is equal to 4.9 kN. And this is the answer of the example 5.4. The next topic we have meta center. So whenever a body floating in a liquid is given a small angular displacement, it starts oscillating about some point. Means it starts to and from motion about some point. This point about which the body starts oscillating or to and from motion is called the meta center of the body. Or in other words, the meta center also be defined may also be defined as the intersection of the line passing through the original center of buoyancy B and CG or G of the body and the vertical line through the new center of buoyancy B1 as shown in figure 5.1 is known as the meta center. So this is the original uh, center of buoyancy and uh, center of gravity while uh, this is the original center of buoyancy, this is the original center of gravity point, while this is the uh, new center of buoyancy and new uh, center of gravity. So when we trace out these two lines and, and, uh, and uh, when these meet at some point, so that point is known as the meta center. Next is metacentric height. So the distance uh, between the center of gravity of floating body and the matter center that is distance gm as shown in figure 5.1 is called the center of uh, called the metacentric height. 
So the distance between the center of gravity and metal center is known as metacentric height. As a matter of fact, the metacentric height of a floating body is a direct measure of its stability. Or in other words, more the metacentric height of a floating body, more it will be stable. In modern design offices, the metacentric height of a board or ships is accurately calculated to check its stability. Some values of metacentric height are also given below. For merchant ships, the metacentric height is up to 1 meter, while for sailing ships, it is up to uh, 1.5 meter. For battleships, it is up to 2 meter, while for river crafts, it is up to 3.5 meters. The next topic we have is conditions of equilibrium of floating body. A body is said to be in equilibrium when it remains steady uh, state while floating in a liquid. Following are the three conditions of equilibrium of floating body. Number one is stable equilibrium, number two is unstable equilibrium and number three is neutral equilibrium. So these are the three conditions of uh, equilibrium of a floating body. Number one, stable equilibrium. So a body is said to be in stable equilibrium if it returns back to its original position when given a small angular displacement. And this happens when the metacentric is, metacenter is higher than the center of gravity of the floating body. So when the metacenter of the body is higher than the center of gravity of the floating body, the, uh, and the body is given a small angular displacement, it will return back to its original position and this state uh, of body is known as stable equilibrium. Next is unstable equilibrium. Uh, a body is said to be in an unstable equilibrium if it does not return back to its original position and heals further away when given a small angular displacement. And uh, this happens when the metacentric or uh, metacenter is lower than the center of gravity of the floating body. So when the meta center of the floating body is lower than the center of gravity of floating body, then this body uh, is said to be an, in an unstable equilibrium. The next is neutral equilibrium. So a body is said to be neutral equilibrium if it, if it occupies a new position and remains at rest at this new position and given a small angular displacement. And this happens when the metal center coincides with the center of gravity of the floating body. So when the metal center of the body coincides with the center of gravity and the body is given some small uh, angular displacement, then the body occupies some new position and remains at rest at that new position. So in this uh, condition, the body is said to be in neutral equilibrium. And this is the end of our today's lecture.